Hello and welcome to Inside Southern California. I'm Lynn Harper and the other day I was looking in my paper and I fell in love with him. Well, not him, although he's pretty cute. I mean him. This is Big Red and you're going to meet him and a lot of his other friends when we get back. So don't go away. Welcome back. You're watching Inside Southern California, and I'm Lynn Harper. And if you want to see more of Inside Southern California, go to our website, philadelphiachannel.com, or my website, lynnharper.com. We have pictures behind the scenes of all of our guests and a lot of other fun stuff. And speaking of fun stuff, I want to introduce you to Lauren Lay. Lauren, welcome to Inside Southern California. Nice to see you. It's a pleasure to have you here, and you brought a lot of friends with you today. We did. Also, I have another guest. And uh, she has the same last name as Lauren. Uh, good reason for that. They're Mr. and Mrs. Lay. This is Jessica Lay. Hi, Jess. Hi. And I met both Lauren and Jessica because I was really, really interested in that picture that I told you about earlier. When I saw Big Red in the paper, I said, I have to meet Big Red in person. And Lauren comes along with the package, apparently. <laughs> and now he's brought Big Red. So let's talk about Big Red first, and then we'll move on to Jessica. Because, Jessica, you're also holding um, another interesting lizard right so big red you are an african tegu no uh, argentina actually an argentine yeah. tegu one of the the largest lizards found in south america and this guy here is one of our uh, store mascots um, we've had him for quite some time he's he's about 12 years old and as you can see he's pretty much full size nice big big lizard big big uh big body lizard. I think he wants to that. say hello to me, don't you? Now, he's got a tongue yeah. that really sticks out. I think that's really amazing that it comes flicking out. There, there it is again. And is Big Red at all poisonous? No, no, he's not poisonous. He's actually, they're uh, considered a very friendly lizard, as you can see. Oh, yeah. They um, use their size to kind of overwhelm a lot of things. They're, being that they are the largest lizard in South America, they're uh, you know, they, this size here, he doesn't have quite a lot of predators, so... Well, you know, it would be a good thing if I asked you if he was poisonous before and put my hands yeah, all over his face. <laughs> <laughs> but he's really gorgeous, and uh, I came down to your, your place, Triple L Reptile, Escondido and Oceanside. I visited the Oceanside one, and I wondered if he was on the premises. Yeah, he is on the premises. We actually, like I said, he's our store mascot. He's... Uh, been a friend of the store for a long time, and he, uh, he's like our official greeter. Oh, so obviously um, he's not for sale. No, no, no. He is, uh, he is loved by many and loved by our employees and uh, is definitely a fixture at our store. Always to be seen anytime you, you come by, he's always there in our window to greet people. Well, he's probably priceless, so I guess there's no way to put a price on him, even if he were for sale, you know? Yeah, he's, he's more valuable to us as our friend than oh. he is. Uh, well, you know, I came down to meet you in Big Red, and uh, I met Jess. And Jess, you... I mean, I might as well. It's like, you know, you're sitting there holding like a huge lizard. <laughs> and for me to just talk to you without making some mention of who's on your lap, who the heck is that anyway? This is Argie. Argie is an Australian Argus monitor. He's actually a cousin to the Komodo dragon, which is the like, biggest land lizard in the world. Um, Argie's a really cool guy. He's actually the store mascot for the Escondido store. So if anybody heads over there, they're going to see him out in the front window there. And so I take it this guy is perfectly non-poisonous also. He is also non-poisonous. He's actually the biggest lizard that you would find in Australia. Um, so he's a pretty big guy. We can kind of see how big he is. See here. Just how big he is. How heavy is he? And, anyway? Oh, he's probably a good 40 pounds. Let me, let me kind of see him. Pet him I can, oh, I can pet him, huh? Oh, wow. He feels so rough. Yeah, he's really neat. He's not covered with feathers or fins or he's covered with scales just like any other reptile. So he's actually really rough and he needs to shed as he grows. What does he weigh? Um, he probably weighs a good 30, 35 pounds. He's a wow. pretty, pretty hefty guy. <laughs> Bigger than my dog. Boy, he's a big guy. Yeah. Yeah. What does he weigh? Not as much, obviously. Um, he's probably about 12, 15 pounds. Boy, oh boy. Yeah. So 60 pounds of lizards here. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. And you know, um, yesterday, just yesterday, I went out to watch you because you have an arm of your business called the Wildlife Company. Right. And you give all kinds of presentations to scout groups and libraries and schools. So I came out to watch you do a presentation. Mm -hmm. Lauren, you would have been proud. <laughs> you fascinated these kids and you brought a lot of animals along with you and some of them are here today. Yep. But I love what you guys do because there are some people, and I'm in sympathy with them, that say, uh, and I'll just, I'll just tell you, you all as well. People say, gee, you know, these types of animals should never be in captivity. They need to be in the wild. But I have to share with you that if 
children, when they're young, don't learn about these animals and how precious they can be and how valuable to um, the ecology, they're probably not going to have the respect for them. And I think I was telling you earlier, I was feeding seagulls on the beach when a little boy came along and started throwing rocks. And I asked the little boy and his mom if they would like to feed the seagulls with me. After this kid fed the seagulls, he understood that these are animals to be appreciated or birds exactly. to be appreciated. Right. And I think that's what you guys do with the wildlife company. Right. We have a small private zoo and we do education at schools and libraries mostly. Um, our goal is to spark an interest in the audience, the children, to actually help want to conserve and care about the ecology of the habitats that these guys come from. And so that's our job. All of our animals are ambassadors to their species in the wild and basically hoping to help kids really love these animals. Well, we like, the, the, like the kid on the beach with the seagulls, if the children don't get a chance to at least experience, I've seen, I saw Argy's, well, I didn't see Argy's picture, I think I saw Big Red's picture. Beautiful picture. But when I met Big Red, hey, maybe it's me, I don't know, but you realize they're sentient beings and they need to be appreciated as well. So you yeah. guys are doing great. Yeah. Now you've brought uh, a lot of, uh, yeah, <laughs> of with us. your whole wildlife <laughs> zoo came here. Yeah. And uh, Kiki is your helper. And Kiki, I think, is holding something really large. Oh my gosh, who is Kiki kind of bringing here. over here? Yeah, we. All what right. Is this? this is Tamako. Tamako is a Colombian red-tailed boa. Wow. Um, comes from similar areas as the tegu in South America. Um, these guys have really incredible camouflage, as you can see. Also a reptile, so covered in scales. But uh, you know, everybody wants to think that snakes oh, are I slimy. Have to see this. And if you give this a try. Heavy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. This is this is some major weight here. Yep. How much does? Tamako way. This snake is probably, you know, they look Whoa. like they really weigh a lot, but I would say probably around 30 to 35 pounds. That's a lot, Jess. Um, not full size, though. When, <laughs> when the snake gets full size, it's going to be um, up to 10 feet long for females yeah. and even up to about 100 pounds. So it's going to get even bigger than this. And we've got another snake that we're going to bring in in just a second that's actually going to get quite a bit bigger. Okay. Um, one of the biggest snakes in the world. Lord of and mercy. This is a really neat Look snake. at this coming up. Because I can feel muscles. There are muscles. Look at this. Now look at this. Yeah, you know? they're unbelievably strong. This Very snake strong. is, is semi-arboreal, which means it's going to live part of its time up in trees. Wow. So they actually really Ooh. do use that tail to hold on. Okay, now this has to be one of the most gorgeous things I think I've ever seen. Yeah, albinos are uh, this is gorgeous. very unique. Um, gorgeous. And, and, you know, we really have to say, gorgeous, it looks more beautiful on the snake than it does on shoes and things. I have to get that in. I mean, you know, yeah. the first thing some people think of is, gee, wouldn't I look good wearing that? No, you wouldn't. Now, this is an albino Burmese python, so what that means is it's actually lacking its natural coloration. Um, a normal Burmese python would be greens and browns, really great camouflage. These guys, since they don't have that camouflage, you actually wow. wouldn't find them out in the wild. You would find them, um, you know, just in captivity. It's the only place you're going to find no an kidding. albino Burmese yeah. python. Wow. Because of the fact that the camouflage is erased, right? Yeah, the camouflage, the, an animal like this wouldn't, wouldn't be able to blend into very much in the uh. wild. But this, uh, is, this, this snake is here, I mean, if you can imagine, this, this, uh, this animal has a long life to live. This, this animal here can get up to about 30 feet, um, and they actually have a Burmese python like this on record right now that's just weighing in at about 300 pounds. So, so 30 feet, but this one is... This one's maybe five, six years old, and it's not even, not even a full eight, nine feet yet. So we're so. looking at three times the length right. and maybe three yeah, times the weight, if not more. Oh, yeah, oh, about much, like this. As, as and what did you say this, uh, this guy's name is again? This is this parquet. parquet. Oh, parquet, like the margarine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right, so I'm just trying to picture parquet um, at 30 feet. I'm just trying to picture it. It's an enormous thing. Yeah, I can't. it's enormous. I can't. Yeah. Wow, this is amazing. And you know what? Parquet is fun to play with. <laughs> it feels so Certain good. snakes can actually make really great pets. Um, you know, for someone that's looking for a starter animal as a pet, something like a corn snake or a ball python, actually are really great pets for kids. And we find that most of our customers at the reptile store are actually moms and kids nowadays. So snakes can make great, great, great pets. pets. I can see that. And it's funny how some people say snakes, ew, you know, and they say slimy, not true. Not, not true. true. And, not and true. personalities, yes. I would yes. think so. And they do. Um, and then the nice thing about keeping snakes for pets, now obviously something like this that's going to get to be up to 30 feet, you need to really make sure you're going to be able to care for that as an adult. But some of the smaller snakes like corn snakes and king snakes like you met yesterday right. actually can make really great pets. And the nice thing about them is how low maintenance they are. 
Um, Who was yesterday was Elvis. He was a corn Elvis snake. Elvis is or a, a king, king snake. snake. A king snake. And Elvis had some pretty colors, and you were talking to a huge audience of kids. And I was really impressed. You asked the kids questions, and they, even they were little, but they, they knew some of the answers. So the moms and the teachers were doing their jobs. Absolutely. I want to know what that little poem was you said about <laughs> snakes, if they're poisonous um, or well, not. Well, a mountain king snake, like Elvis was, looks really similar to a coral snake. Um, and there's the easiest way to tell the difference is red touch black is your friend Jack. Uh -huh. And if you noticed, Elvis's red and, and black saddles were right next to each right. other. And red touch yellow will kill a fellow, and that would be a coral snake. <laughs> okay, so as long as we keep red away from yellow, we should be okay. Yeah, yep. we'll be all right. <laughs> now, I understand that you have brought um, our next guest, who is an American alligator, and Kiki's going to bring our guest, the American alligator, and you've named the American alligator. This is Daytona. Daytona. Daytona is an American alligator. A baby American alligator. Obviously, he's just a baby. Oh. Um, he's about... Almost three years old. These guys only grow to be about one Thanks, foot Kiki. per year. Um, and so right now he's only about three years old. These guys can live to be over a hundred years old. So he's got quite a long life ahead of him. Whoa. And he'll get to be up to ten feet long. Now you showed him to the long. kids yesterday. Right. We had him out for the kids yesterday. Kids love the alligators. They're just really neat animals. People really, really can connect with the alligators since they're right they're from right here in, in the United States. So. And also these guys, people sometimes say Alligators, crocodiles, what's the difference? And I know, you know, if you can always go to the, web, the websites, the internet, and find out, why don't you just tell us, how do you know that this guy is an alligator and not a crocodile? A couple quick differences. Um, first of all, it would be their teeth. If you take a look, um, you can see that his, you can see his top teeth actually coming out of his mouth. Yeah, I can. Crocodiles, okay. actually, you'd be able to see both the top and the bottom, feet, the bottom teeth. That's one of the biggest differences. And also this, the shape of the snout. Um, alligators have a much shorter, kind of almost squared off snout, where an, a crocodile is going to have a really long, thin snout. And so as far as danger way. goes, um, how well, dangerous? Typically, a crocodile is going to be a little more aggressive than an alligator. American alligators actually tend to have really good temperaments. They're, they're a pretty mellow animal. Um, these guys are actually illegal to own in the state of California, yeah, though you have to question. have a really special permit through California Fish and Game in order to own these guys. We actually got... Um, our alligator from someone who had had one illegally in their garage and California Fish and Game confiscated it and then placed it with us because we had Daytona? I mean, I mean, not Daytona, but what's his name? This is Daytona. Okay. Oh, Daytona. This mm -hmm. is Daytona. So... And we, have, we actually have three alligators. Oh, okay. And all so, of them have so he was confiscated rescue. and that's the reason. I, I, it's yeah. sort of good they're illegal because, you know, you, you worry about when they get larger, you know. And they, they're not a good pet. They're not something that everybody should own because they do get very large they can be aggressive exactly. and they can be dangerous that's so the problem with little baby Easter bunnies all of a sudden or little chickies and they get big so people uh, enjoy them but it doesn't necessarily mean you got to take them home with you and then you Sorry. have to worry about when they get larger speaking of larger hey Kiki I saw somebody that I met yesterday I love to see again is Rosie over there okay I love Rosie and uh, for those of you who are dying to know, who is Rosie? Rosie is a red-haired tarantula. And um, somebody on our crew who shall remain nameless said, Oh, I'm not ever going to touch a tarantula, but why is Rosie not dangerous to touch? Well, the tarantulas, the thing you have to keep in mind with tarantulas is that a lot of times they use their size and the intimidation factor which works great on humans, <laughs> Can I have that will actually have you have a fear you. of them. Um, oh, she's so tarantulas, worried. most oh. tarantulas just have the ability to stunt prey, not kill it. They're not using a poison like a snake would. It's more of like a stinger to just stunt things. And, uh, you know, people commonly think of, of spiders, black widows, things that are much more dangerous. But in actuality, most tarantulas throughout the world are, are, are docile. I mean, they're not... Yeah, look. So they're not something you would want to hold all the time because they're a delicate creature, but they are definitely not all, all aggressive. Well, as a pet, I suppose Rosie could be crawling around, you know, but you have to be careful if she falls off and somebody steps on her, you know. Yeah. You could lose her in the house. Yeah. But uh, there's a couple of interesting things about Rosie. Yesterday, you had a little girl come up and hold Rosie and counted the legs. And you kept counting to ten. And the children were saying, spiders have eight legs. And you kept counting ten. And there are. Well, let's see, one, two, three, four. there are ten, but two of them aren't legs. Right. These two up here um, are actually their sense organs, and they use those for um, catching and, and eating. 
Um, what do they eat? Finding food. <laughs> Bugs in the wild, uh, they, in captivity, most people feed them crickets. Well, you know, I, uh, I, I love Rosie, and so I wanted to know all about her. And I understand Rosie, being a female, is larger than a male. That's and correct. Rosie lives 25 years, which is cool for me because I'd have her around a while. But her husbands can only live five years. If they're lucky. If they're lucky. <laughs> and they can only mate once each husband, which means that in five years, he gets one shot at happiness, and she needs about 25 husbands. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. 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 Rosie, I don't know what to say. A lucky yeah. woman. She's kind of like, a, you had mentioned when, if you turn Rosie over, she has a little trick that she can do because of her Velcro-like right. feet. We kind of joke around in our school programs that we actually glued Velcro on the bottom of her feet, which isn't exactly the case. They actually have <laughs> tiny little hairs on the bottom of their feet that are hooks, and they use those and to hold on. So we have the original Spider Woman right here. Oh, look at that. Oh, my gosh. She's so cute. <laughs> she's so cute. And she's quiet, too, so you could have her in an apartment. These guys can oh, make yeah. great, pets great pets for people who, who have limited space and don't want to have a big responsibility because they, they can eat real sporadically. Um, and they have really low requirements and, and not a lot of requirements well, for space. Speaking of low requirements, here's a scorpion. And this is the emperor scorpion. This is an emperor scorpion. And you didn't name the emperor scorpion, right? Um, we have names for him, but, uh, you know, everyone always likes to call him empires and other yeah. things. So we kind of... He's a beauty. He looks like a black lobster. Look at those big claws. Yeah, big claws. Wow. And, and not beautiful. only that, if you look at the... They have a, f a fairly sizable stinger also. Yeah. Um, He's but cool. Kind of with with scorpions, you know, a lot of misconceptions are is that they're also all dangerous like spiders. And in actuality, scorpions, you know, not to be not to be toyed with, but they definitely are a very non-aggressive animal. Their only basis of life is just to seek out food, and uh, very rarely will they be aggressive unless you're 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 aggressive to them. And you mentioned they eat crickets. Yeah, Live insect crickets. eater. So they you have use to those big powerful pinchers. Them? And, um, you so know. put your finger in there, Lauren, and show us how to <laughs> If well, you do, uh, will, he, will he pinch you? Probably not. Um, oh. This is actually a very, very um, nice scorpion in terms of, of how they react. They are very quick. Um, they can turn like a tank where they can basically just kind of rotate very quickly. Um, and they have um, the interesting thing also about scorpions is that if you were to shine a black light on scorpions because they have a special type of uh, material or amino acid in their skin, they'll actually illuminate. Oh, nice. Um, I wish we could recreate that here, but we can't. You know what? Let's take a quick break. And when we get back, we're going to meet some of those warm-blooded friends I told you about. So stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Inside Southern California. I'm Lynn Harper, and these are my guests, the Lays, Lauren and Jessica and Zari. Zari, an African serval. Yes, yeah, this is Zari. Wow. She's an African serval. She's a member of the medium-sized cat family, so she's cousins with ocelots and lynx. Um, these guys are called the giraffe cats of Africa because she has such long legs. She lives in the savannas where the grasses are pretty tall, so she needs to have those big long legs so that she can um, scan for food. Oh, she's licking me. Does this mean that she wants to... Oh, I heard somebody. <laughs> That sounds like Willie. Yeah, that's Willie. We'll see him well, in a minute. Well, Zari, um, I hate to say this, but we can't bring Willie out when you're here. Yeah. What would happen? <laughs> well, these guys actually will eat birds in the wild, so I don't really want to take <gasps> oh a chance. They have um, super long legs. They can actually jump six feet straight up in the air and catch birds right out of the air. That's with, what they call them, giraffe cats, cats, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. If she sit up for us a little bit, you can see those legs. Oh, yeah, baby girl. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and there's a little hiss. Hi. Oh, and now, a you know, But she hears <laughs> Willie. So I wonder if, if we can bring Willie in. Can Kiki come and take Zari? How does that work? So we sure, we'll get Zari. In. Okay. Great. Yeah, so, if, so there goes Zari. I'll and I guess Kiki. Right so, Lauren, where do you keep Willie? Because uh, I'm hearing Willie yelling. Wow, look at Willie. Well, Willie's Ooh, got a great vantage point of a beautiful, uh, beautiful <laughs> area. And uh, he gets to look out and watch other birds and... He's is he really in your Escondido or your Oceanside We actually uh, keep Willie with our, at our private zoo. Oh. Um, he, he spends most of his time going to the, uh, the birthday wow. parties and entertaining kids. And Boy, I can see why. He's a severe macaw, you told me. Right. Yeah. This is Willie. He's a severe macaw. He's what's called a mini macaw. So he's related to all the bigger macaws you see, like blue and gold and scarlet macaws. But this is about full size for Willie. He's actually about 19 years old. So, so he's young. He's young because he will live to be 80 oh. to 100 years old. Well, so. you know, Willie, before I heard you laughing and, you know, why isn't he 
He's just acting like a bird right now. Yeah, on, we can see if we can get him to talk a little okay. bit. Everybody always asks me, can parrots talk? Parrots actually don't talk. What they do is called mimicking. So he's copying what he hears. So let's see here. Willie, can you say hello? Yeah. It figures. Right? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be shy today. A little bit of stage fright today. Oh, that's all can right. Can you say hello? Don't give him any food. He only talks. Can you say hello? <laughs> can you give me a kiss? Good bird. Can you say hello? I'm asking he's, for trouble here. He's just a I new should go on my head, right? Um, well, we're working on lots of different things. He says, uh, "What you doing?" and "Hi, Willie." And he um, he says, "Cracker" sometimes. But those are his two that he does pretty well. The rest of them are kind of inconsistent. Well, I love his laughter. Unfortunately, he's not laughing now. But he was laughing in the studio, and yes. Robert was walking by, and Robert started laughing as he. As oh he, yeah, you know, he he's very entertaining. Yeah. yeah, he's one of our favorites um, in our programs that we do. Kids always love. The parrot. I get drawings and thank yous after the programs, and kids always choose oh. to to draw the to draw the parrot. So Willie the severe macaw. Willie the severe macaw. He actually can eat with a fork and a knife. If you want to see this, oh yeah. We'll see if we can get him to do it here. This. Parrots actually use their their feet, um, kind of like a fork, to help get their food from the plate, the right. tree, and bring it to their mouth where they have a knife, their beak. Um, and those feet are actually really handy for lots of different things. Obviously, they need them for holding onto branches up in the trees, but also for food and um, climbing around. So. Okay. Well, you know, we are saving not the best for last, but I'd say the most rambunctious for last. Yes. Oh. And we're going to have to take a break because when we get back, we're going to meet Geppetto. Right. And so we have to make sure everybody gets out of Geppetto's way. So I don't want you guys to miss this. So you're watching Inside Southern California. My guests, the Lays and Friends, I'm Lynn Harper. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Linda Cohn from Sports Center. This message is to all of you sports fans who have an HD TV but don't have ESPN HD. What are you thinking? That's like driving a Porsche 30 miles an hour. It's like having Bonds Bunt. It's like having a golden retriever in an apartment. Call Adelphia and get their HD service. Then you can watch all the sports you want on ESPN HD. Unleash your HD TV. Get ESPN HD with the Adelphia HD service. Welcome back. This is Inside Southern California. I'm Lynn Harper. Again, Jessica and Lauren. And joining us, Geppetto. Geppetto, the capuchin monkey. Right. He's a weeper capuchin monkey. These guys are found in Central and South America. Um, oh. This guy is probably one of our very favorite ambassadors for our shows. Um, we use him during our rainforest program, and what we talk about is how his job in the rainforest is to make a mess, which he's demonstrating for us here today. Yes, he I don't guess I want to tell everybody that Lauren <laughs> had to clean up one of those little messes before we yes, came on. Yes, yes monkeys present. definitely do not make good pets. That's one good example here. Um, these guys, you need a real special permit to have a capuchin monkey. And um, the only reason we're allowed to is since we do education with and these it, guys. And it should be because, you know, it can't be stressed enough that they don't make good pets. And the reason Geppetto is here is because you do educate people from the time they're really little right. that these are to be respected. Right. Not necessarily to be kept as pets or at all to be kept in the case of Geppetto, but to right. be respected. Because some people would say, well, gee, why do you have Geppetto in captivity? Shouldn't he be back where, what's the indigenous to, South America? Mm -hmm. But without Geppetto, a lot of children won't understand. They need to see him, and then they see him, and they're going to say, I really want the best for this little guy, so let's keep him where he's safe. Right. So absolutely. you do a wonderful job at the wildlife company. Thank you. And I, I appreciate that. Speaking for, you know, mothers everywhere, no pets. Our monkeys. <laughs> yeah, so what else about the, the capuchin monkey is so special? Well, these guys are really incredible animals. They're very intelligent. They have a really big brain compared to their body mass. So they're actually really smart. And they, they've used weeper capuchins like Geppetto for a program called Helping Hands, which is a program that actually trains capuchin monkeys to oh. help handicapped people do daily tasks such as picking up the phone, opening the refrigerator. Um, opening the door if there's someone there and they're really incredible and then another reason why they can do that is because they've got these really cool thumbs they have thumbs just like we do opposable even on thumbs. their feet they have opposable thumbs and they have a prehensile tail so they can actually use that tail to support their weight and so he, he, this guy is I can't tell you never can tell age 
but he's a primate, right? Yep, he's a primate. He's almost um, almost five years old now. He's been with us since he was a pretty little guy. His mother rejected him when he was little, so he was had, had to be raised on a bottle. And that's why he made such a great ambassador for our educational programs. And uh, these guys used to be the traditional organ grinder monkeys, right? right? They used to, I, you know what, they don't have them anymore, I don't think. When I was a little kid, down at the um, Long Beach Pike, I remember, they had an organ grinder monkey. And this little guy tipped his hat, and he went in and got pennies from the people. Mm -hmm. What a life. <laughs> you know, I'm really, really glad you guys are educating people that these are not pets, but they need to be appreciated, you know? Right. I, can't, I can't really say that enough. So what other things about the capuchin monkeys are uh, making them different from all of these other animals, because, besides their intelligence, for one thing? Well, um, the fact that they're just so intelligent is one of the biggest um, things about primates, the opposable thumb, the prehensile tail. Um, this guy, like I said, his job in the wild is actually to make a mess. He fertilizes the rainforest by taking all this extra fruit and things and throwing it oh, down to the bottom. Oh, say no more. He's I understand. It's kind of like what he did on the couch earlier. <laughs> right, and also seed spreading. Hey, Geppetto, okay. now you're going Well, I want to thank you guys for being here. First of all, I want to make sure that everybody knows if you want to see some of our guests today, you can go to see Lauren and Jess at Triple uh, L Reptile, Escondido, and Oceanside. But the Wildlife Company, which is really super, and we are obviously on our screen. If you'd like to take a look, you'll see the Wildlife Company and uh, LLL Reptile, websites. And speaking of websites, of course you're going to want to go to AdelphiaChannel.com and my website LynnHarford.com and you can find out all about the pictures that we were taking today, the behind the scenes information, and everyone can contact you guys through all of that. Okay. So I, I can't thank you enough. It was a big deal to bring all of these animals here. And Kiki, thank you very much for also helping out. I really appreciate it. So Lauren Lay, Jessica Lay, Geppetto, I want to thank everybody for being here, and don't forget, hang with us. We'll be back next week. I'm Lynn Harper. Take care. <laughs>